Working at the Wildlife Care Network, we see a lot of birds come in that have been entangled in fishing line. They have hooks in their beaks, they have hooks in their wings. Their wings have been constrained by, by line. Their mouths have been closed shut due to line being wrapped around their, their beaks. These birds sometimes fly around for days before we're able to catch them when they have a, a fish hook in their pouch or, or stuck in their mouth or they've swallowed a fish hook and then the fishing line becomes entangled uh, around their body and they do become immobilized. But then after being properly medicated um, and fed, even too fed when they're not eating because they're in pain, but after all of that, they get better and they're able to fly again their wounds are healed, and being a part of that process just really makes it all worth it. That's one of my favorite things that I've taken away from working at Santa Barbara Wildlife is the goodness in people and their caring, you know, the fact that they're willing to just stop everything in their day to help take care of this little animal that they've found. It really shows you every day the good side of humanity. Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network receives over 3,000 animals every year. We take in about 1,500 songbirds a year, about 500 seabirds, about 100 raptors, that's hawks and owls, and about 300 small mammals, including skunks, raccoons, squirrels, and opossums. Uh, we take in over 10,000 calls every year from members of the public, from Santa Maria to through Ventura. People are just so happy to have a resource that can help them with their wildlife issues. I don't think we're only about animals. We're really a lot about people. And seeing people come in holding a bird that's been caught by their cat, not knowing what to do with it, bringing it in and handing it to somebody that you know is going to do a good job. I think one of the biggest impacts that Santa Barbara Wildlife has on the ecosystem is that we are able to rescue and rehabilitate large numbers of songbirds that had their nest disturbed for various reasons. Uh, those birds are so important to our environment. They are insectivores. It's just great to be able to give them a second chance out there at survival. You always have one that's just even a little more dear and close to you, and that is hard when you let them go because you hope they make it and you hope they flourish you do get a little bit sad, but it is so exciting to let them go and release them at a creek and they're instantly playing in the water and they're smelling and they're excited about this new spot. A lot of people don't like raccoons, but they are really, they're wonderful creatures. We had a bunch of crows come in last spring that were still of the age where we had to hand feed them and I didn't realize that they make this hilarious sound when you give them the food. But it was really the first time that I had looked at a bird and it seemed like it was really thinking and like looking at me and you could see that there's some sort of higher intelligence going on behind its eyes. I think the saddest story here was from my very first day of volunteering. Um, a pelican came in that had been hit by a car and it was pretty late in the day. It was, I think, seven, seven o'clock and we were closing. And I remember Jesse being like, okay, pelicans, big birds, you know. Um, we're like, wow, day one, we get to see a pelican. And it came in right at the end and it had this huge open wound and it was bleeding and it was just in really bad shape. As far as we could tell, it had gotten hit by a car. Um, its wing was broken. We were all kind of feeling bad because, you know, we were trying to make it as comfortable as possible and examining it and giving it medication, trying to wrap up its, its open wound. Um, but it was kind of nice that we could be there to give it a nice place to kind of be calm and not be stressed out in the middle of nowhere. You know, there's like a bit of a silver lining there because it did mean that someone stopped and took the time to call us and to help, you know, get this pelican in that was obviously really injured. I 
think the wildlife care network is really important in Santa Barbara because we feel a need to raise public awareness that we have these species around us and we need to learn to live with them because what would it be like to be sitting out here without hearing these birds or seeing the fox in the canyon in the afternoon. We hope to be in the community you know, for a long time because it's so important for people to continue to appreciate the natural world. We're really community-based and I think what really makes us different is a lot of cities don't have a facility like this and what do you do with that wild animal when you find it or it's hit on the side of the road or the baby bird's fallen out of the tree. And we rely on support from the general public. We have to keep this going and it's expensive. And it's so important for us to be there and uh, sustain it for the future generations. I think the Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network is very important to have in the community because it raises awareness about animal welfare and about animal education and teaching us really why these animals are important in the wild where they should be. And I think it's also really important that future generations still have wildlife to look at and be amazed by, you know, that I can one day with my kids or grandkids take them out and say look at all these birds and all this diversity that's here because somebody cared enough to try and help them even when they're in a time of need and when they're struggling.